Are we on air or not on air? You're on the air. Lights on. Oh, lights on. Great. Okay. So with that, good evening, everybody. Um, I guess I'll call the meeting to order. This is the budget workshop for Monday, May 6. Um, and those present, I don't know if we want to. I think we can take just notes. I don't know if we need to go around the table. So. I think with that, I think what we wanted to do tonight is to just have a conversation. I think Tom is going to share with us some of his work in progress on sort of the budget and some adjustment items. Um, and then I think we'll open it up to questions for Tom. Then I think we will hear a presentation, I think, from Sarah on some of the work in progress for the school budget and then just have a conversation around that and kind of see where we are at the end of the evening and talk about what, what that means and next steps. Yep. Does, does that work for everybody? Sounds great. Good. So I'll start. Uh, kind of picking up where I left off with the Finance Committee last week, was it? The uh, April 24th meeting. We kind of closed that session with uh, sharing with you a number of thoughts. The Finance Committee took no action. We thought it would be good to kind of brief the full crowd on some of those things. And even since then, there's a couple of other items I'd like to bring to your attention. So the top categories really all relate to uh, capital adjustments. And I would put them in three categories. One is a deferment of certain capital projects. You can see them there. There's a renovation of the planning department, um, deferment of capital hall, uh, excuse me, town hall carpet replacement, and then there's a final piece of a subsurface drainage assessment that uh, we can defer to a future year. So that totals 132,000. The next category under capital um, really amounts to how we choose to finance them. I have proposed to appropriate monies to finance some of the lower value, um, the kind of those items with lower uh, life expectancy as well. So you'll see a whole host of uh, options there. I can provide further detail, but a number of those departments, there's multiple pieces associated. And then the last one was uh, related to an equipment reserve account. Uh, the Finance Committee has long desired to establish a program where we start saving toward uh, funding future capital projects. And I guess that begs the question, is this the year that we should start, or is that something we can defer? <coughs> and that's up in front of you as well. The other, uh, other adjustments I would bring to your attention is debt service costs. Uh, the Council just approved last week issuance of about $7.6 million in bonds. Um, there's, there's obviously debt cost associated with that. I'll, I'll claim the responsibility. I kind of missed it in terms of carrying a number. Um, but uh, that's part of the refinement that, uh, that unfolds before our eyes. Uh, there's also some other kind of complicating factors, and, and I don't profess to understand all the details, but there, we do expect some level of bid premium associated with this bond issue. Uh, there's a lot of mystery in my mind, and okay. there's not much certainty in terms of what that's going to be, but uh, over the last four bond issues, we've, we have received bid premium. Last year, it was very sizable, and we were able to use it to offset cost of issuance, uh, we actually uh, ended up borrowing less than we had authorization. Uh, so I think there's the potential for that. I'm not confident enough to tell you what that is and how that will affect uh, from a budget point of view. In a positive light, uh, we do expect uh, additional excise tax revenues. So comfortably, I think we can go up another 125000 That will bring us to what we expect to end this fiscal year with. And so maybe a discussion point uh, either tonight or, or for Wednesday for the Finance Committee is there may be further room there as well. And lastly, uh, for the first time in many years, we're actually starting to see some return on our investments. The interest rate is creeping up, but um, we do have sizable investments, and so it does add up. So we're uh, confident in increasing that estimate by another 25000 So all told, those factors considered bring us to about $730,000 change. And again, the Finance Committee has not taken any action, and I just kind of thought that was a decent place for this conversation to start tonight, and then maybe we'll learn more from our school colleagues uh, about some possible adjustments on their side of the equation as well. Can you please answer any questions you have? Okay. Just please, a quick question, Tom. So I know the, the, debt, the new debt service is kind of a new item. Do you think by going back to the bond agent and other things that we can work up some best guess at what the bond premium might be in the next week or so, or is that? I, I can find out as soon as Wednesday night whether he has any ability to 
predict that with, with some level of clarity. Uh, I think that's going to be a bit of a stretch. Um, as I understand the bond premium, it's a way for investors. They actually uh, are, are hedging against uh, what they expect are to be higher interest rates in the future. And so they end up paying a bit premium uh, today to make sure that uh, they account for that. And that could be sizable. It could, in the past, it's been as close, uh, approaching a million dollars. Uh, last year was sizable, for sure. But of course, we borrowed twice as much last year as we are this year. So it's relative to the size of the bond issue as well. So I, I should be able to get clarity for Wednesday night on, on whether or not he could give us confidence there. That'd be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Jones. Tom, the uh, equipment reserve payment, is that the entirety of the first payment? So essentially this account won't exist. Is that the 170, so it doesn't 000? exist today either. Yeah, right. But it's going to continue to yes. not exist? Yeah. Correct. Okay. I mean, our goal was to try it. it was, we were in six years, the way our policy is written, we're supposed to get get there. So we were trying to take a sixth of the, the nugget that we needed. Yeah. But it's the same question is, is it the right time? And what was your nugget? Your nugget was $1.2 million or? No, it's, it's that's that's a million. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, six times, yeah, yeah, whatever that is, yeah. Anything else? Hey, Tom, uh, uh, I want to thank you for this. Uh, you know, I think each, with each pass, we get uh, more granularity. So thank you for that. And thank you for taking the initiative to, you know, to respond to the request. Um, but I am a little curious, you know, the kind of the words that jump out to me are deferment, shift, postponement. So how, how much of these would really, you know, if any of these would really classify as true reductions? Well, I would say deferments are, are, are true reductions. You'll have another uh, go around and conversation whether it's a priority that makes the list next year. So I, I think you can comfortably say that that's a, a true adjustment. Uh, the other ones are really choices in terms of how we choose to, to finance our, our needs. Great. Okay. Thanks. Would you normally have these five vehicles that are listed between the, the shift from cash to financing? We would norm under, let's say, last year's budget. Would we have financed these under normal conditions? Is, was this part of you taking direction of trying to yeah, bond we, less? That's or? been a goal for many years, and, and with some limited uh, success, we've, we've done more and more through operating or through appropriation. This year was by far and away the most aggressive I've ever been as a kind of a starting point. Yeah. Um, and it's really a place where I think we need to get to. Uh, I think it's going to help immeasurably, but it's just a matter of when is the time and right to do that. The last question, Tom. So, on the things that we have shifted from appropriation to financing, which is a 441,000 change, does that include a little bit of debt service? I mean, is it net of the debt service in those items, or is that another something we need to factor in? Debt service for this for these items would not be seen in FY 2020. It would be a 21 consideration. consideration. Right. We would not be actually borrowing for these until this time next year. Yeah, right. it's the same. Right. Okay. Does anybody else in general have any questions for Tom? Um, I'm just going to go back to Paul's question around, you know, the long-term kind of goal or strategy and the shift, and that's been coming to you from mostly from the Finance Committee, correct? Yeah, it's been an ongoing conversation yep. for at least the four years Peter's been there. I know that. Yeah. But some, I mean, what I would say and what I hear all the time is there are a lot of arguments for good debt versus bad debt, and sometimes taking on debt makes sense in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So that's really just a matter of kind of opinion and policy versus one thing is better or, or not than the other and going forward. Yeah, and, and is that me, fair? That's, that's absolutely fair. And okay. let me be even clearer on that point. Um, when we're talking about financing. Some of the, some of these are uh, financing for as low as three years in five years in most cases. So we're being very thoughtful. We're not being foolish in terms of pushing these out 10 or 15, much less 20 years. So uh, it's just financing them as opposed to raising the funds to, to buy them outright initially. Anybody else? Anybody have any questions at all for the town manager? Where have bond rates been? They're still remaining uh, pretty competitive. I mean, we might be able to speak with more clarity on that. <laughs> <laughs> they got that was interest rates are a little bit higher, I think, 
um, they're, they're starting to creep up because the, the Fed's been raising the rates. So we're looking between 4 and 5 percent right now. Mm -hmm. 3 and 5, maybe. We'll know more within a couple of weeks with our impending bond sale. Still cheap. <clears throat> I think I heard didn't the bond rates go down today because of the China. That's and temporary. Wall Street. Wall Street. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's temporary. Yeah. Tweet no. volatility. Yeah. Tweet volatility. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's what I call it. <laughs> so got kind of going once, going twice. Or... Hillary Adder. Oh, well, I just have a general question for people who might be watching and people who are not on finance. Um, can you talk a little bit about the why there's been a direction from the finance committee to shift from appropriation to financing and what the benefit to that is? And, and I mean, I assume some things need to be financed no matter what. And where's that coming from? Yeah, we do have a policy that gives some some guidance. Uh, generally, any anything under a hundred thousand dollars in cost, and also its life expectancy needs to be considered in that. Uh, that's a that's a pretty good barometer of, you know, the, where you should be, um, how you should be financing. But beyond that, it's a matter of preference and tolerance uh, equated to your household budget. It would be great if you could save for your next car. Can you do that, or do you find a way to, to finance it? So it's, it's not dissimilar in that regard. I, uh, other than the fact that there is a philosophy of borrowing, those that enjoy the, the goods and, and use a fire truck, a ladder truck as an example, is it fair for uh, folks to save for it over time and not have the value of its service? That's going to be in service for 20 years into the future after we buy it. So um, I don't think that philosophy works perfectly well in all cases, but I think it's a strong argument given certain capital projects. I think the other factor is we've actually, the finance community has spent some time really trying to develop some metrics that we can really measure financially how we're doing as a town as compared to others. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that sort of, we, we have a pretty high debt per capita as compared to others. So some of that was thinking, how do other towns do things? We always compare ourselves with like Falmouth and some of the other communities. Mm -hmm. They do a little more of, of putting it through sort of operations rather than capital. So I think that was, we're just trying to look at that and try to get to a place that's kind of a happy place in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the cycle we're on, just to exemplify that point, uh, we're, simply, uh, we're essentially replacing, as we retire debt, we're taking on new debt, and so we're never making any headway. We're always around that $100 million, and uh, we'll always have big ticket items that are voter approved that are the lion's share, but we're consistently borrowing four to six to seven million a year, and if there's a, a way, another way to meet our needs without doing that, I, I think that's a laudable goal. Tom, how much of that is because of the growth of Scarborough? I mean, Scarborough's been growing by leaps and bounds, so, you know, there's, got, there's bound to be some increase in, in investment. Um, sure, I would say the, the, the big ticket items, the facilities, schools, and public safety, those sorts of things have a, a huge component associated with our growth, no question. If I can add, Hillary, um, the other side, too, it goes back to the charter, and that is, there's a um, heavy reliance on reserves. So it says specifically that anything in excess of 8.3% of our reserves should go towards capital projects. At the same time, we're also fighting changes in accounting and changes in expectations from the credit market. And what they're now saying is that instead of having one month of debt service available or one month of operating expenses available, they want us to really have two. And we're just barely over the 8.33%. We're at, I think, 8.8, some, some ways around there. So we have this competing kind of uh, conflict in our budgeting where they want us to reserve more um, at the same time that we have requests for capital. So we're trying, we're trying to just find a balance between the two requests mm -hmm. or the two th uh, methodologies. Okay. Thank you. So Tom, I had sort of a follow-up question here. Uh, you know, uh, and I, uh, this is this focused primarily on the town side and I'm expecting we're gonna be seeing and hearing more detail from uh, the schools uh, uh, this evening. Uh, but when we met last and we reviewed a handful of departments, we went through public safety, we went through community services uh, and others, and there was a request, uh, you know, if we wanted to hear from any others or if there were questions that we had from other departments that we hadn't heard from. So my question is uh, uh, twofold. First is, there were specific questions, specific uh, pushback on certain things like staff level additions and so forth that are not part of your 
proposed adjustments here so what can we help the public to understand in terms of you know if and when there would be any real response to that can i assume if we they don't hear it again it means the answer was no or is there a time when they can expect that they would really hear a response to that and that would also include questions we received from from citizens uh, that were really quite specific yeah, I guess I would characterize, I didn't hear pushback. I heard a presentation and discussion around uh, and, and a genuine interest in learning more about the, the need. Uh, I put it in my budget request because I thought it was appropriate, and, and as we sit here, I still do. Um, in fact, all members are present here. As I recall, Chairman Babine at the time said, we're going to hold off on making any final decisions pending this meeting. Okay. And I would hope that we leave tonight with some level of clarity uh, at the end of it as to what the next step is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I think that, I think what we had decided to have this conversation tonight, but Wednesday night, I think, is kind of designed, and I think uh, Chairman Babine kind of asked us to send questions that we want Tom to be prepared to kind of answer, which which I had sort of anticipated some of those okay. maybe staffing questions. Following on to this one. Yeah. yeah. Then, oh, in fact, I, I saw think, a host of questions from you today that yeah. we'll be prepared to answer. Okay. And I think, Councilor Bay, I think by Wednesday night you would have a recommendation. Is that our, our goal? That's our to goal. have a recommendation yes. of thing, other things that may not be on this list that we would we'd bring forward? Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah. The, the, the goal is that the Finance Committee will have a vote. Um, and, and forward a recommendation to the town council for consideration at its next meeting. Great, thank you. And just for clarity's sake, so if you don't hear from us, then it's pretty safe to assume that we're pretty comfortable with the shifts and refinements that have already taken place. Is that would would that be your three's assumption? Or hope or goal coming out of tonight's conversation? I mean, I, I guess I'm what I'm asking, if I were you and I'm sitting on finance, if there were other things that people were going to ask for, you'd want to know in advance of that meeting, correct? Um, Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. But I've also learned over 20 years that doesn't necessarily happen. Of course. <laughs> right. But I think that you're making a good point that uh, by our silence on these items, mm -hmm. We're accepting, because we're not pushing back and saying we would pr prefer not to see those made. And I'm going to attend your meeting, Finance Committee meeting. I expect most of the town council will be there, because it's the deciding point for us yeah. on further adjustments. And to the extent that the Finance Committee members have, and all seven of us have suggestions, just as Peter was Town manager indicated Peter had some ideas. We need to get those ideas out and circulated so that when the meeting occurs on Wednesday, we can have a really good discussion about that. Mm -hmm. and, and Tom's prepared to, to address them. Yeah, yeah and, and please recall the, the Finance Committee's recommendation is just that. That's typically, as a matter of courtesy, the first amendment that's offered at second reading. Uh, that doesn't preclude a counselor from bringing any other matter forward. Right. But uh, to the extent that we can do this collaboratively, I think that's the best way to do it. I think I would add to, to Councilor Foley's guy. Yeah, I think part of tonight was sharing this. We had seen this. Right. And I think we're, you know, we haven't voted on it. It's going to be in the whole matrix of what we're talking about, but at least comfortable enough to see how all of you felt about it tonight. Because I think we're trying to vector tonight to where are we? So I think if anybody, any town council members have any issue with this, it would be a good to know it tonight. Right. If not, we will, I think, John will proceed with well, that, that it seems reasonable. Around. There's items up here that impact the school, so I would be open to hearing from our yeah. colleagues yeah. on the school board as well. Yeah. Any other questions on the, on the town before we move to the next conversation? Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Tom? Yes. Thank you. Some people in the audience are indicating they can't hear very well. Yeah, we all need it. Imagine. I think everyone I can, needs I can, to I can't hear amplify. <laughs> I mean, it's an ongoing issue we've been having about, just so you know. Yeah, the, the, the challenge is this is perfect. It provides for a really good broadcast, okay. but it doesn't do a great job of uh, in amplifying in the, in the council chamber. So please do move up. Uh, we'll do our best. Every, everyone be mindful of raising your voice a bit. Sarah? Good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I'm handing out um, documents. 
that we can use the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. uh, although I don't know if it's going to change since the email. It has. Yeah. Oh, I just want to know the Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's the same. She said, I'm not sure. I'm like, well, the color's different. <laughs> we'll send that those. That, that could just be the printer. <laughs> <laughs> the color hasn't changed. It's probably my printer. <laughs> Picture. Oh, my. I see it too. Oh, yeah. At the front end. Does everyone have a copy? All right. So I also have a, a couple slides just to go along with it. But this will be the this document will form the basis of our conversation. Um, so just as a reminder, the goals and the principles that we use when, or that Julie and the leadership council use when creating, <coughs> um, but also those that we use when making adjustments um, are up on the screen now. So we're prioritizing our resources K uh, twelve, um, providing required and appropriate services based on student student needs. Um, we're responding to the growth in town, so the increased demands and enrollment in K-2. We want to maintain existing programs and, and ensure student safety, expand 21st century offering, and then support um, our 500-plus employee base. So now if you refer to the document, um, we'll, we'll sort of start where we'll end. So if you flip it over to the back, that very bottom number, the 137,000, that's the total um, reduction to the tax request. So then if we kind of go back to the beginning, if you're reading this document, and I sent this out, so hopefully you guys all had a chance to look at it, but the very top portion is the first reading. Everything that's in blue um, are proposed adjustments. And then the updated numbers are at the bottom. So I've included, again, for the audience and for anyone watching at home, I've included the items that we've made adjustments to up in the screen. The reason why there's no total down there is because those are coming from different areas. So some of them are from the operating budget. Some of them are, are from moving from appropriation to finance. So it doesn't really make sense to have a total. Um, but that's all reflected in this spreadsheet. Um, so some of the, the key reductions, if we just start from the top and go down, so we've had um, updated numbers come in for um, both Anthem and Delta. Um, so significant re reduction from Anthem, not so much for Delta, but still a reduction nonetheless. Um, the retirement projection change, so the stipend, uh, paying out a stipend versus breakage, so $25,000 reduction there. Um, we've reduced the IT operating budget equipment purchase line for the, tech, the high school tech refresh, $50,000. Um, reduced the fees for the $1,000 for the GSEA, the actual cost. So if our voters, and Julie will correct me if I'm wrong here, if our voters vote no to enter the GSEA, um, then that line will be removed. So that would actually be an increase. Or sorry, a decrease. We, we, we would have that thousand dollars back. Actually, if we right, right, but, right, we get that money back. But we, but we, lose, we lose eighty thousand dollars. We lose eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> we traded in on eighty yeah. thousand dollars. Yeah, actually, in the um, original proposal, um, we budgeted two thousand dollars for the annual fee membership fee, and it's actually only a thousand. So that's, um, that's why you see that there. reduction there. And then yes, if the voters say no, our overall budget will reduce by over eighty-three thousand mm. dollars. Nice. Yeah. No, so yeah. So while we're on the topic, the the GSEA is in the yeah. budget. Yeah. So right. if, if we vote no, that eighty that three thousand dollars would be removed. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, an ouch. it's an ouch. Which is why it's That's important for us to all be communicating that we should vote yes on municipal question one. Um. So the nine thousand reduction in the. Um, expected cost for uh, Vogue School. And then if we go down to the next section, um, so those were just, the top section was basically estimates and then adjustments based on um, the final numbers that came in. And then below, uh, we've added in unified basketball. So you know, if you remember, it wasn't in the original first budget proposal. Um, we've had a significantly reduced um, estimated cost due to um, the ability that we've been able to receive a grant. Um, 99 percent sure that we'll get that grant, I think is the language that we're using, um, as well as just some more realistic estimates. 
Um, we've reduced our strategic planning budget. It was originally in there for $15,000. Um, we've reduced that down $5,000 to $10,000. Um, this next one is, a, is an increase. So, um, and I'll probably let Julie or Kate explain this a little bit better than I, than I can, but um, some of our students, based on their needs, they uh, we're, they're, have an, an out-of-district placement. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what the out-of-district line means. And the main care is basically if those families are refusing for a variety of different reasons, main care, that cost gets put back on the school. Um, so this was uh, added cost based off conversations that have happened since first reading. And this number um, is likely to change between now and the next couple of weeks as we continue through, or as our, the staff continues through um, the IEP meetings. Anything to add to that? Did nope. I say it right? Nope. Okay. Um, other items that we've reduced uh, from the, the capital budget would be this, the plumber gym sound system. Um, we've removed that completely, as well as deferring the plumber and alumni gym scoreboards. We've removed that completely and deferring that for next year. The bus purchase amount, um, that was based off of the VW uh, rebate. So the DEP... Um, made an arrangement with vendors that said instead of us paying the full amount and they rebate us back, they're just taking $75,000 off the top of it. So that's why you see the reduction in here versus what was in the first budget. Um, the debt service line, so that's a line, that's a, a decision that the, the council needs to make um, on whether or not they defer the principal payment. So that's um, up for discussion and potentially an item in motion. But right now, based on what we've heard, we've, we've added that as a reduction. <coughs> And then if you switch to the back, um, so the $45,000 truck, that was, that was in Tom's um, CIP. And also, I should have said the, the plumber jam and the, the scoreboards would also go on Tom's sheet because these are capital um, items as well if, if we continue to decide to leave those. Yeah, but I, I wasn't carrying them, so it's good that you reflect them separately. Yeah. So just the truck appears on the town sheet, yeah. not the scoreboard or the sound system. Not the value scoreboard. to it. So, oh, yes. yeah. so it is not double counted. No. 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 Okay. Uh, so items that are still in motion. So uh, we're still going through kindergarten reg registration as of right now. The projections um, remain true. So. We think that we'll have significantly increased enrollment, as we've been saying. Um, uh, Allison and the special services staff are about halfway through the IEP, individual uh, IEP meetings. Um, based on where they are today, uh, they believe that there could be a potential of um, ed tech support needed. Um, however, there's still, we still have halfway to go through those IEPs, so um, it's not something that we're willing to take out of the budget now without knowing that for sure. Um, and then the out-of-district tuition, obviously I added a plus there with just a, we never know if that's going to go up. Workers' comp, I already said, and the debt service, um, that's a, a decision for the council to make. Um, we also recently found out that there's still about $500,000 left in the impact fees budget, um, and there are a num number of items in capital improvement that we believe would qualify for that type of uh, funding source. And so again, that's a decision that the, the council would have to make, but we wanted to make that known here. Because there's, if you add that up, I think it's just over $400,000 uh, that could potentially be funded by impact. And sorry to clarify, th those are in the current budget. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yep. The only thing that's the, not the impact, yet. The impact. Uh, what's that? The impact. No, but the these asked these, these, these these are. Except for the last one, the Pleasant Hill um, modular, which is why there's no price there. Yeah. Um, either Ruth or Tom, can I ask, uh, can you refresh my memory from the last meeting we had regarding the impact fees? After the last allocation we just approved, what's the balance in that impact fee account now? Uh, before the FY20? Um, well, whatever we just approved uh, was $200,000, $300,000. $260,000. $260,000. 260. 
Well, we, uh, so what's the balance after that? Or even before, because I can figure it out. 509. Five, five, it's 509. Five, so it's after it's 509? 509,500. Okay. We're appropriating that 700 and some thousand or estimating use of that 700,000 out of those funds for FY20, a portion of it for um, school and a portion for town. In debt service. In debt service. Right, so the, uh, there's a total of seven hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars in this FY20 budget already. I shouldn't say that. Two sixty of which goes to the modular, so that's not in the budget necessarily. Five oh nine is in for debt service. That is in the budget for sure. So we, if we went and said, yeah, great, use okay. the, that's that we're going to reduce our debt service by five oh nine if we use the impact fees for these, correct? I think what's left after you take into account what I just said, uh, there's about 457,000, is that right? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Thank you. If you use it now, it will not be available for debt service okay. offset next year, right. so it's, yeah. it's one of those, pick your poison. But presumably, we'd also have more added to the impact fee account next year. Well, presumably, so, yeah. Our practice has been to use the actual receipts from two years ago. and. The reason we even had the modular discussion is that we had a banner year uh, two years ago, such that we received over 700000 that year. But on average, the surplus each year is in the order of three to 400 that yeah, we generate? Between 250 and 300 yeah. uh, for the last 20 years on average. Um, I think we saw a spike with the multifamily development. It was just a flurry of development all at once, and they pulled permits. So I, I, I don't think that's sustainable. I know it's not. But I, I think historical levels we can always expect. But what would be budgeted next year is on the total receipts from la two years, last two years. year, last right. year, which is still lower. So it, while they're using five hundred and six thousand for debt service, it's going to be probably I think if I remember the numbers on the sheet, it's like a hundred thousand dollars lower. It's four hundred and three five forty. Yes, thank you. You're so welcome. yeah. But it's going to be a hundred thousand just in the debt service side. We're going to have a gap on, on how he, you know, next year, hundred thousand. Slight gap, yeah. Slight gap, and that's that's actual receipts. So that's yeah. not an estimate. We have right. that, and then we'll know what the performance was this year as well. Tom, can you Please. clarify what the five hundred and nine thousand that's in the budget now is being is going for? Because I thought that Ruth just said some of it is being paid school debt service and some of it is for the town. I, I, I characterize it as de uh, debt revenue. So there's ample school debt to cover many multiples of that. So I would, I would say it's all going towards school debt. Thank you. Do you guys have anything to add before we just open it up to questions? April, Alicia? I uh, would just like to add that uh, I like this version much better than the one you sent before that had a lot of blanks. So mm. this is uh, a nice nice progress and uh, moving in the right direction. So thank you. Yeah, the blanks was really just to show the outline <laughs> just to get our attention of the document, document. <laughs> less the, the numbers. Thank you. I no, I don't. Thank you. I have a question. Um, on the superintendent search, it's my understanding that you are you haven't found anybody yet, and you're going to an interim superintendent. Is that correct? Uh, is that already figured in as far as uh, payroll? I mean, whoever you've got coming in interim, are they coming in July first, or are they coming in later? Are they, and are there any savings by delaying bringing someone in? Okay, and you want to take that? Sure. Um, they'd be slated for a July 1st start, and at this point, it does not appear. I can't answer the question about savings. Okay, right. And the, and likewise for the high school principal position. I was just wondering if that's baked in anywhere. So I'm interviewing the finalists tomorrow night, okay. and we'll be bringing a recommendation to the board on May 16th, and so we believe that we have adequate funding in the budget to support okay. I was just curious, is, is that going to be filled right away, too? Because yes. I know the superintendent fills those and not the school board, so. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just a point of clarification, too. We don't have the option to defer appointing the superintendent. Right. I think it's a law that we have to. No, I know that, but, but, but what my thinking was that if you had an interim, is it less expensive than what you're paying now? 
is there a delay, you know, one month, two month delay before you bring someone on? Do you have to have someone? That's all I was asking. Because obviously that's cost savings. For a month you're not paying a salary. But you have to have it on July 1. Okay. Yeah, okay. There cannot be a gap, but there could be a differential in the pay scale. Right. Which, which to your point, you could know. still, right. Right. even if it's $10,000, but, you know, right. we know that $10,000 means everything yes. sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Can you, can you, the question I have, so it sounds like on the three buses, you guys, there's some type of grant monies that come back, like that like 75000 It's It's not that comes back, it's that that's the a savings off the purchase price, so the discounted vendor, price. A discounted price Creative off price. The, the original price. Yeah. I can speak to that a little bit. Um, yeah, I was just trying to find the flow because you've got 75, it looks like, as a reduction, and then 75 as an ink, so it washes. Is that, um, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the reason that's a wash is because okay. those, those buses were slated to be bonded in the first place. So if we're looking at a reduction in the tax ask, the tax request, then it's a net zero because those funds were not meant to be part of the tax request from the schools anyway. But it's a reduction in our expenditure budget. Does that make sense? And it's because it wasn't in your net ask because there was because no debt was, service on the buses next year in um, the ask, so that's why? Not the debt service, but the fact that the buses were slated to be bonded in the first place, well, so there would, they wouldn't be paid for with tax dollars in FY20. Well, they, if they were bonded and there was debt service, they would be. But not until FY21. That's what you're cycle. saying, Tom, that yeah. because of that cycle, they wouldn't be bought until late in the... The bond spring. wouldn't the be issued budget, until the spring. Yeah, in the capital budget, we have uh, anticipated bond proceeds, if you will, as a revenue. And so what Kate is saying is that we need to take $75,000 away from that. We don't need to borrow it in the first place. So it will help us long term, not in FY20. We're bonding $75,000 less right. than we anticipated when we created the first. Right, rebate. so it doesn't. It's because not. we're spending $75,000 less. And to speak to that point, um, originally we put the value of the three buses in our uh, budget as a full expenditure because in the past the model with uh, DEP grants has been that you pay for the bus to the vendor full cost and then somewhere down the line after you retire an, an old bus an old what I call a stinky bus, take that off the road, then you receive the, the grant revenues. So we weren't sure of the timeline of that. And then just last week we found out that the DEP has made a different arrangement with this VW settlement grant mm -hmm. in that they are providing the funds directly to the vendor. So we can purchase the bus at a discounted rate oh, so the money goes right up front. The, the money goes to the bus manufacturer? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So we don't have to shell out the money and then wait for it to be returned to us, which means that we can reduce our expenditure budget accordingly. That's too bad for us. Hmm. We get it, but it's just... That's confusing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Um, it's probably a Julie question, I think. Out of district placement, do we, and if you can't, I should know this, but if you can't share, you can't share, and I get that too. How much say does the district have in what that looks like? So, do, do you understand what I'm saying without going to <coughs> a level, another level of detail? Yeah, it's a team decision, just okay. like any other IEP decision and developer education plan decision is. Um, so the district is a part of the team. But ultimately, it's based on what's best for the student. And so we don't, um, it's really dependent upon what the programmatic needs are. That's what really drives the placement. Um, parents or families will often go and do site visits. Um, but usually, we're selecting the placement based on some really specific criteria. Um, and just for everyone's kind of general knowledge, our general rule of thumb is we try to keep all of our students in district. Mm -hmm. um, that's the least restrictive. So long as it's the least restrictive, most appropriate placement for that child. Um, but there are times when the student might need a two to one type of ratio. Um, and at that point is when we start to say, is this the most efficient and effective placement for the child? Or do we need to look out for, for a more specialized program? Thank you. I, I have a question on that as well. Um, in determining the out-of-district main care potential fluctuations, is that something that you'll be able to determine at the end of the IEP process, or is there 
the ability for parents to reject the main care at any point, and so it could fluctuate at any time during the year. It fluctuates at any time during the year. It could be a parent um, elects to, um, to move away from main care billing um, in their current placement, and, um, and then it could change within you know, a week. They could decide to go back. Um, sometimes it's they need assistance filling out paperwork and things like that. In this case, we already are aware of um, at least one situation where we've been had, having to retropay um, some bills, so that's what we're making our estimates based on, or, or those three months of retro payment. Um, but it is something that's really volatile and could fluctuate. <coughs> I would add to that that trying to estimate what's going on with um, special services in any budget year is challenging because our students change, their needs change, their IEPs change. So this just adds an extra little layer of, compl of complexity. <coughs> To the um, the funding that we need to make sure that these children's needs are cared for, um, but it is always volatile. And I think Allison's phrase is that she's only a phone call away from something that just changes everything. I, I did have another question. So, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to walk the track and the astroturf this afternoon. So those those are. Still in the capital budget for 1.05 million. Those improvements. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Requires voter approval, of course. Okay. Referendum. They go to referendum, and they're going to go to referendum as one item, right? The yes. Track and yeah, they the they are the connected. They they need to be one item, yeah. one one project. So there'd be a referendum in the fall then, or is it? I presume yeah. they they would no, like no. to put it out as soon as yeah. this fall. So the only thing I'd say about that is, uh, <clears throat> and I. Don't mean to have one data point uh, suggested as a, you know, as a conclusion, but uh, I talked to a couple of the track coaches down there, and they, uh, with reference to the track, which seems to be in better shape than the turf, the turf is really, uh, it's falling apart. Uh, but they said the real issue with the track is they would like another couple extra lanes, yeah. uh, not just six lanes. So that way they could attract uh, track meets and. Other things. Um, so, is that something is still an open item? And uh, I've not been closed? directly involved, but I know Todd Susan and uh, Mike Legage have been back and forth on this issue. That you're correct, eight lanes would be preferable. But you're yeah. talking about moving grandstands and drainage. It's a far more complicated and expensive okay. endeavor. Yeah. So, so that's not in the number. No, two. it's yeah. just to replace the, the current six lane track in the okay. turf field. Keep the status quo. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth, it's anecdotal, but it's from someone that uh, I, I know and I, I trust their opinion. Uh, he's a longtime referee and made the point to me that this is by far the worst field uh, in the league. And we used to be the only and the best, and, mm -hmm. and everyone else is yeah. you know, replaced or, or built brand new. I think we're five or six years past its uh, yeah. expected okay. life, hmm. so uh, it's becoming to be a safety issue, I think. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions on the on either budget at this point? Mm. Not, not seeing any, I guess. Um, uh, well, I, don't, I guess I'll ask one other question. So, with these adjustments, it at this point still preserves most of the investments that you guys put forth as recommended, correct? Like in terms of new positions and whatnot. Okay, great. And to add to Katie's question, for both the school and town, there's not a there's not a single position that's been adjusted between first either and, side. Correct? Correct. So there is so just to work clear, there's not a position on your end or your end that is on any one of these sheets of paper. Correct. Okay. So I had a question. So are we, if I do the numbers, uh, so that if we take the number that Tom shared of uh, set roughly 730,000 reductions with this number, that uh, decrease of 137 and change, so that gives, you know, by my count, almost 870, 870,000. So that's still roughly about 430,000 short of the 1.3 million right. that we said was the gap between the first reading number and 3%. Yes, your so, math is correct. Does it, can anyone give me a number what that mill rate 
number would be produced with this. Can I ask Ruth to work it up? I'm not yeah. sure she can share it. Yeah. Second. Yeah. So. I'll get to thanks. Yeah. Thank you. But I, I think this would be helpful for us to know kind of what you know. We're closing the gap. We're making nice headway. You know. Uh, we got more more time to talk about it. Uh, and, uh, I think we, we have other things, maybe other suggestions, uh, not necessarily on the school side. So that, that really is the next conversation. Right. So where do we, yeah. where are we, and how do we, where do we go from here? Yeah. Is I, really the conversation. I get accused of reading ahead often. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think that that number would be helpful just to know where we are. <clears throat> I, I guess, too, I, um, I just wanted to reiterate what I heard from a couple of town councilors a couple of meetings ago that um, this 1.3 didn't necessarily need to come from the school side in order for a budget to be supported. And I just want to, you know, say thank you to our finance committee in terms of the diligence and to Superintendent Gutenberger in terms of the diligence that you guys exhibited to look at this budget in a thoughtful way and to preserve the investments that we we value and um, to be creative in, in some reductions to try to help get to that 1.3 number. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if you have any further questions, I would encourage you to watch the two streaming school board finance meetings because we did ask a lot of specific questions and Julie and Kate in particular were able to give us a lot of in-depth information and, and we really did try to think um, about many different um, machinations for, for, for making adjustments. So that may be helpful information as well. Great, thank you. And also thank you to Kate, because I know you've done mm -hmm. yeoman's work throughout this process. So appreciate the one-armed wonder. Say something about the, oh, no, I'm the one-armed wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be the sparkle unicorn, and now I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting those budget socks out again. <laughs> so, so I guess with that, as, as we think of where we are, right? anybody have any views about Close enough? Do we need to get closer? Where's what sort of uh, conversation? That's a fault. So that was going to be my question and or comment is a thank you to everybody involved in the adjustments and refinements so far. I, I, I feel much more comfortable with this and where we are right now to the point where I could probably just stamp it and say yes. I look forward to further conversations to see what comes out of, is it Wednesday? For, for yeah. the town council. But that's, I think, from a process standpoint, what I want to know, and I think what the public is, the biggest question on their minds is, is it Wednesday night when the Finance Committee finites, puts a final stamp on numbers, if there's anything else that needs to go forward, that's correct? That's when they would hear those numbers? Say that again. So the, the question again. Recommendations. Recommendations for, for any final... So the first step, I would think, from a linear perspective, is that we would take up the recommendations that have been presented tonight, and then we would then have on any additional amendments that come through the committee process. Right, but Wednesday would be the yes. the night. Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday would be the night we come up with recommendations that will come back to correct the full town council body. Yep. yep. So yeah. I uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for the, the hard work and the progress. Uh, and we're really trending very nicely, uh, you know, opinion of one. Uh, the one thing I would like to see, uh, and I know that uh, several suggestions have been made along the way, but I don't, I, I know that everybody is, is working hard with the funds that they have, but they're, I'm still missing some things that I think we uh, could commit to that fall in the area of doing things differently. Um, and, and, and I think those those included some things like looking at the businesses that we are in, uh, the property that we hold, the uh, services that we provide that may not be core services on either the school side or on the municipal side. So I'd really like us to take a, a pass at that if there's any chance of that in the next meeting, in addition to whatever else we might be able to come up with as we, we press through another iteration. So that would just be a process suggestion and an aspiration. Can you clarify what you mean by that in terms of the school side? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't really know that I have a lot of ideas for the school side, uh, frankly. Um, 
but I guess I know that you guys are tight with the shekels and very creative about how you use money. Uh, and so and I think you've demonstrated that in our discussions around various things, yeah. you know, going back to the modular discussion that wasn't really part of the budget cycle. So I, I don't know right offhand on, on, this, on the municipal side, there are things like, uh, you know, do we really want to keep the property uh, on Black Point Road? Do we do, you know, the school side, I would suggest, you know, is there a chance for us to look at things that we provide in terms of services, for example, janitorial services, property management expenses, that sort of thing. Now, this may be far afield and not really within our appetite or ability to get our arms around, but I really, I, th I think with what we have ahead of us in terms of pressure on capital spend and a lot of other demands that you've done a great job of articulating, you know, is there at least, we can, is there a way for us to commit to starting the journey even if we can't make a specific quantitative commitment this time around? So that so would be one. When you identify those services, are you talking about the municipal side or the? Uh, well, janitorial, for example. I mean, do we really need to have our own, uh, you know, full-time janitorial staff mm -hmm. and uh, you know, building management? Uh, and I know we there's history with this and all kinds of issues around it. And I know Jim and Marie are going to have a I'm long discussion over this over <laughs> coffee. <laughs> So uh, just because it happened then doesn't mean it would happen again. But, so that, that would be an example. Uh, um, the other thing I could think of would be uh, the, uh, uh, and I just looked at it on a sheet here, but it would be the, uh, it's just slipped, slipping in my mind, but um, um, it had to do with uh, school lunches. You know, we run that as a loss leader for year after year after year. We're going to get another $200,000, you know, budgeted loss, you know. Is it time for us to cut with the feds and figure it out on our own? I, I don't know. You're going to be very cut. excited to hear this. Party on. We did that. We voted to cut with the feds at our <laughs> most recent board meeting. We are out at the high of school. The, at the high high school. school. We are high out school. of the federal nutrition program, and we are very fortunate test. to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I also I also want to add though that every district in the state and regionally and countrywide does not make money on a lunch right. program. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not, not alone in that. <laughs> we're not a restaurant. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and, uh, but like I but we are making yeah. steps to April's point. Right. I think. Right. You're leaving you know, no stone we're not on gonna, We're not going to get rich, but... Oh, that's great. Yeah. No stone on a new yeah. program. Like and again, right. that's why I would encourage you to go back and look at those meetings, yeah. because I think that you'll find that many of those tough discussions have occurred in the school board finance meetings. I will do that. Thanks. So did you build... Were there any, were there any adjustments for that in that budgeted loss because of yeah. switching? Or yeah. You, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. haven't even made the change right. yet. Right. We're going to pilot it um, over the next couple of months, and the school board already has planned to take it up um, in the fall to kind of assess the revenue aspect of it. A couple other things we did just by opening the school doors 20 minutes earlier. We're trying to promote breakfast and um, get families to right. you know, want to purchase breakfast at school more because that's a good way for us to kind of balance the books, if you will, um, plus what we're offering, trying to offer more whole foods, more natural foods, um, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables that you know our students are eating at home. We want to mirror that at school. Um, and um, we're not, it's not an option for us to step away from the feds with the K-8 yep. nutrition program. I understand. It's that. only yeah. a possibility of the school. Don, it may not give you comfort, but uh, for years, until two or three years ago, we simply <laughs> didn't fund that deficit with that yeah. that was always running uh, yeah. in the black we, we hit the bullet so to speak three years ago I think and have funded it ever since so right. at least we're recognizing that right. through the budget process there, thank you there's a cost and it's not just a way to use fund balance yeah. terrific thanks do you have a magic answer <laughs> are you <laughs> really like oh that's my trouble okay, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if we look at the uh, what the mid range yeah. yeah. The mid-range tax rate adjustment would be still is showing at a 3.60 percent increase over last year. Uh, the net budget is at 4.7 percent. Great. So that gap of 450 is 3.4 to 430. You said that. What number do you use? 430-ish. 433. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Can I shift gear? I, I don't. Are we, are we sticking with the school or are we bouncing all around? Just bounce. Just bounce. Just bounce. bounce. Can we just bounce? Yeah. We can just bounce. Okay. So it's I, a technical term. Yes. Yeah, so right. Yeah. We can just bounce. So I think at the um, department presentations, I think Peter uh, did not push back, but wanted a little bit more information on the rough mower ask for eighty-six thousand dollars. I believe it was. And I believe Tom had and Todd had committed to getting a little bit more background behind that. Is there an update on the rough mower ask? Did I get the number right? Yeah, let's think it's about 70 or something. Is it 70? 70. Yeah. But Tom's got that. Is that that'll be a conversation Wednesday night. I think. Wednesday. Okay, so we're not going to have it here. We'll have well, it. Well, I, I, I don't we know. We can start yeah. here. You know, it's, it's part of our process improvement. We're, we're trying to move more to... Uh, do a better job of turf management, basically. Yeah, sure. It's all related to our organic program. Uh, this is a piece of equipment that will be far more efficient and, and effective. You're mowing the grass before you drive over it, essentially. So we think that long term it's going to prove to be very valuable to us. Uh, but, but it is a new investment, and it's yeah. a different way of doing things, for sure. Do you think there's savings on the labor end, or is that? I believe so. It's uh, far more effective. Yeah, it's a twofold. I mean, really, all we've been doing is Why don't you come to the podium, Todd? <laughs> uh, we've been doing all of our do. mowing with uh, uh, gang mowers, which um, so there will be a savings as far as time. Presently, right now, we mow with our gang mowers, and I go back and most days do a second cut on my athletic fields just to re get the grass. The gang mowers are real mowers, and they lay it down. A rough cut mower has individual deck, it undulates better. Um, they're faster, they're easier to train people. Right now, we only have a few people that are allowed to drive in our extensive crowd, um, staff of three. Um, you know, um, it's tough to drive because you're looking behind you, what you got to hit. Um, the, the purpose of the rough cut mower for the organics, it's we can change the deck height in a rough cut mower within 20 minutes. Yeah. On site with a gang mower, you got to bring back to the shop, set it all up. Um, but on the staff side of it, it allows us to carry two pieces of equipment off site. Presently, we mow everything here and then we hit all the outside sites. And it takes the, um, the large John Deere tractor and the rough cut um, gang mower and a person and a piece of equipment to go somewhere. If we are afforded to get the rough cut mower, we'll reduce our, our mowing time, but also our transportation time. We'll be able to bring uh, a gator with us, a uh, cromer to line the fields, or if it's an infield drag, with two people in a truck, so it's gonna send less equipment out, and it's also gonna send uh, uh, less time because we get multiple pieces out there. Um, I am working on the write-up for Tom, but I did, I will put this out there, if I did talk with my staff after our last meeting, if we were to, be offered the choice. We would rather defer the front cut uh, mower <coughs> just because of what this gains us. Presently, right now, um, we're so short of staff as far as trained staff. Yep. That anything we can do efficiently, especially to keep up with the organics demand, the amount of mowing. Um, we, we cut and lay in the organics, so it's not like we're bagging it. So every time we miss a cut or the delay, we're, we're doing multiple mows. So this rough cut will allow us the efficiency that we're lacking now to, to keep up with the organics program. Awesome. Thank you. Tom, on that, did, was that, it was an appropriations originally. Were those items, did you move them to bonding in, yes. your, in your big number? Yeah, so now at this up, point. Uh, if I can just get back to the oh, slide, is it? I can show you. Is the rough cut moved well, to bonding? It was appropriations, but Tom. Oh, no. sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Yeah, it's included it. in. Yeah. So that was. Yeah, the 168.06. Okay, it's included in the it's community. Okay. Of, I think there's three total. Three pieces, okay. pieces so, there. So right now it's not affecting our net budget anyway. Yeah, because so, it's, it's our the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. That answers mine. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, had the, it was yeah. like, I had the same question. Yeah. For, okay. So that's a great question. Peter, if yeah. I could. I just want to add, as far as uh, the expect to make sure that the expectations for Wednesday's meeting is is understood. So and this is really to Council Hamill's suggestion that there's other areas that could have some attention given to it. I hope people understand is that um, as far as any recommendations to where the school should provide some attention, we won't be discussing that at our meeting. Um, we will discuss the net appropriation, which is prescribed by law, but we won't be, unless the school department and the school board comes forward and says, you know what, we took Councilor Hamill's advice and we can cut, you know, whatever, um, we're not bringing it up, uh, just so you know, as far as on an individual line item service basis, but it's definitely an option that's on the municipal side. It's, you know, it is open for discussion for the other things, because I think you're talking about Fair the, point. Yep, the global, Palmer, global Palmer building. Can, can I ask a question where it gets a little, we need to look at it going forward, but it's kind of come up in conversations tonight. It's kind of this, 
strange thing. What was referenced tonight is consideration, you know, is our impact fees on the table to help with the budget, our reserves on the table to help with the budget. Where did those conversations take place? And, and how do you, how do you as, as a body feel about reserves and using reserves if that was a place we needed to go? Was that an open conversation or a concerning conversation? Or? We, don't, we don't have reserves, so I don't think that, it, in terms of these items, I think the place for that conversation to happen is here. And while we're all present to talk about whether or not, you know, are we maximizing all of our funding sources, I think is really the question we want to ask. Um, these are real needs that we have in the budget right now. Um, but even when it comes to capital projects, that, that's not something that the school board decides or that I decide how it gets funded. That's something that the town manager usually makes those recommendations, and I get ultimately the town council approves that. So while we tend to focus on expenses, uh, conversations around revenues would be appropriate for Wednesday evening for us as well. So that... Okay. Any revenue source? You're talking about fund balance? Or, or, I mean, the conversation at the table tonight was, you know, we had a brief conversation about impact fees. If there is some balance in impact fees, is it appropriate or not appropriate right. to consider that? And I just wanted to get a sense whether that that's a good thing or a bad thing from your perspective. If that was a conversation. We discussed it as a, as a potential way to manipulate the figures. <laughs> But you know, I mean, but it, but but that's She's ultimately a, your decision, right? So it would be okay. If we, I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, all I'm trying to do is mm -hmm. make sure that if we had that conversation, you're aware of it. And, yes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. As long as you're, I think that the difference or the nuance is that you can't say, well, we're not going to let you do the eight corners parking project, but we will allow you to use fund balance no. to fund the classrooms. Right. Right. Um, that would be. That yeah. would not be that would cross a, a good idea. Okay. So um, just throw a number. But I think <laughs> But I think here we should have this real conversation so here while everybody what you have to award in full council. Yeah, it's I think it's, I think it's, it's more yeah. fun. Peter, if I'm understanding Tom correctly though, it's not like these impact fees are sitting there waiting to get spent. I mean they are he's he's well, allocating these towards debt service. Well there's four hundred and fifty thousand to be spent and historically right. we've used it toward debt service. If you choose to use it for something else, it's not available for debt Correct. service. Correct. So and, and it's in here currently as debt service. That's right. Yes. Yeah, there's okay. Right. But there's four hundred and fifty thousand that are not that. But the not being sure, sure, but the typical practice is not to touch it for two years later. So when yeah. we say there's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in it, that would also would have a whole new convention on when we even touch that money. And there'll be receipts from this year that we right. don't even have accounting on okay. at this point. Right. Because because actually Scarborough Downs is pretty I mean some of those impact fees will start to roll in, won't they? With in another sure. twelve months. Yeah, I would fully expect we'll be certainly at our historical average and probably beating it. Uh, you know, will we have a year like we did two years ago? Probably not, but I think it's going to be a fairly steady stream. Are the Scarborough Downs impact fees deferred in any way through the, the TIF? No. No. Just the tax piece. The dollars. Um, so do you collect I... that upon building permits, or do you collect that upon building completion? Or... Building permits. We asked for occupancy permits. They said no. <laughs> As we talk about this particular fund, I hope people understand that because, believe me, I remember when the impact fees were approved and it was very contentious, um, especially amongst developers. But um, the most recent approval is actually the first, it is the first capital project that was funded by the impact fee versus using it in, uh, as an operating expense to cover the debt service related. So um, not to make the plug now, I think it's a little short-sighted if we simply um, raid that account now while it, there can be an argument made because of this um, is because you need to really look at what's going to happen over the next three to five years and how that supports the budget overall because you're just shooting yourself in the foot down the road in my opinion well so, so I guess the question in the room for the, this conversation if we're at 3.6 do we think that's where we are and that will pass the first time through I was happy with the budget before the adjustments Peter okay. yeah. okay, I would think we draw, make a judgment on that once we complete uh, our work on Wednesday night. But I'm fine with the way the school budget is. With the $137,000 adjustment, I think that's uh, quite appropriate. Thank you. Job well done. Thank you. Thank you. And I feel, this, I feel the same way. Okay. 
And, and like Mr. Babine, I could have taken the budget just the way it is. I mean, not the way after first reading, but when it first came in. Because, as I've always said, I'm looking at down the line. I mean, when the final mill rate comes in, as long as it's not more than 3%, I'm fine with it. And with reval or whatever, it would be that way. So. And to the great work that Kate's done, generally right. speaking, the budgets that I, at least I've been a part of, there's always been a natural adjustment to the school's budget through refinement as the numbers get more, you know, better known, whether it's Anthem insurance or what it, contracts or whatever. So I don't look at this 137000 as extraordinary um, by any means. I think it's just natural, which speaks to your work. So thank you. It's the work. Are you looking for us each to weigh in? Or I, I'm confused with you, where you're no, going. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to get because here's what I, so my thoughts would be, I don't think the budget as presented at first read would have passed. I think this will. Um, would I like to see it slightly lower? Yes. And yet, I think, again, the, the conversation around what what we're filling for, and I mean, we're, this, this budget has a lot of really great investments in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And we've still come much closer to uh, the, the goal, the stated goal, um, than we were. So I, I feel pretty confident that we can get this thing passed on the and, and yes, lurking in the background, and we've agreed to leave it out of the conversation, but lurking in the background is, in fact, a residential reval, which we all know will have a positive impact at the end. I think it was important to leave it out for a lot of the reasons that we've stated in previous meetings, but um, so that's where I am at. I, I feel very comfortable with this. And there's still some refinements that could come out of the next meeting. I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. I think there's several things that we can do that will um, improve the municipal budget without doing harm to the goals that the town manager set forth in the original budget. So I don't think 3.6 is where we're going to end up. I think it's going to be much closer to three. Yeah, I'd like to follow through on the process and see where we are. Just to kind of go back to the impact fees conversation, the outfitting the new classrooms, if, if this is still accurate, is scheduled to be appropriated, the 118000 right. yeah. um, And then you can always decide to have the conversation again next year, January, February time frame, you know, earlier than we did this year about whether or not we want to access impact fees for the second set of eight corners classrooms or the Pleasant Hill module or modular because that's, we're not going to order them right now. We're going to, we're going to see how enrollment fleshes out in the fall through December and then be coming to talk, have that conversation. Um, and I think it would be smart for our community to again go back to the school impact fees do we want to fund these modulars in that way um, as that fee was originally intended for or do we want to go forward and bond the money to, to purchase those units at that time um, but we have a little bit of time to have that conversation and all 500,000 all 500,000 of this is appropriated right now correct on the slide no the traffic redesign is scheduled to be bonded I believe okay um, I'm reading or actually let me just stop that here. The classrooms, the second bullet yep. is scheduled to be appropriated. Yep. The traffic redesign um, is scheduled to be appropriated. I don't think that got shifted. Um, I believe. I'm reading. And then the eight corners classrooms were scheduled to be bonded. So I think I asked this question of April about a week ago, but I can't remember the answer. Was there, seeing that those six classrooms include the two modulars, the two modular buildings, so there's four classrooms there, correct? Yes. And then we're talking. No. Oh, right here? Yeah, the six classrooms. Oh, yeah, yes. Right? Yep. And then that also includes a classroom in Pleasant Hill and a classroom in Blue Point, correct? Correct. Okay, so if, was there any discussion of making that four classrooms because the second modular building would bleed into FY 21? Did I ask that right? You did. Yes. When you asked me, I think 
it was coming from a place of we had talked about as a finance committee whether or not there was an incentive to bundle some of the expenditures or whether it was better to order four sets of classroom material, like if there was any added benefit to doing all six at a cost savings. Um, and we had said in some cases, um, you know, for the yes. for furnishings, yes. it absolutely was a cost savings to do them all together. But then other areas like Chromebooks, we were not going to see a, a savings yeah. to outfit the technology portion. Tom, Tom, good question for you. In the past, when we've done these types of things, like the traffic redesign, if that's an appropriation in the past, has that been it's bonded? Actually, it's scheduled to be bonded, I suppose. Okay, okay, so the traffic is bonded, but yeah. the furniture is right. appropriations. Yeah. Would we have, a, I think I've saw in the past we've put furniture in appropriate in, in bonding. <coughs> we have, and we've not felt good, good about it, well, I yeah. would say. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we have. Yes. <laughs> so when I went through and, and gave my recommendations, I, I tried to be thoughtful in terms yeah, of what the yeah. items were and what their life expectancy was. So there, there's certainly more room to, to go there if you wish. I think it gets more challenging. Is, is it for us to, is it possible for us to decide, like, so to me, I know I understand that all of these could fall under impact fees, but the top one stands out to me as eight corners is overcrowded. It's getting more kids, more teachers. That is directly more proportionate questions. to more classrooms, the population. That seems to me to be like a no brainer. That should have been used. That should be impact fees that paid for that. Well, to be but clear, the, the, okay, the, yeah. the, financing, clear the financing piece is not determined by the school. The okay. school puts yeah. out a budget that says we need the funds, mm -hmm. and then the town finance office, the town manager, and to some extent the town council decide where the money comes from. Okay, so... Um, so what we're doing here is we're making a recommendation, like, hey, y'all, wouldn't this be a cool thing to do with impact fees? Um, and then... Right. Having put that out there, that then it would be up to the council to decide whether that's a good use right. of those money. But I guess because the council isn't it doesn't have the ability to say we pick this one, this one, and not that one. Is it? We're not. I, mean, I don't think we're really all. All we're picking is just how it's going to be paid for. Paid for. Okay. How it's going to be paid for. So they would have these. So you would to say, be able to say traffic traffic re redesign. We'd like to use impact fees for that. This we'd like to bond. This we'd like to appropriate. Yes. Okay. As long as it's consistent with yeah. past practices. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in, in this case, remind, remember we have an ordinance that governs and a state statute that governs. So we've got to be very clear and careful about uh, where we're using uh, impact fees. Right. I don't disagree with what with your assessment. I think that probably would qualify, in my opinion. Okay. So, sorry, I just need, I just want to clear this up. So, when we did our presentation about the modulars at eight corners, why was that different than something like this? It was out of budget cycle. Because you wanted to order them. Too much okay. early. Yeah. Thank you. And that's a decent point. I think to the extent that we can keep things through the budget process, it's yeah. better and cleaner. I mm -hmm. see yes. nods, uh, heads nodding from counselors. I know it's not always possible, and that was a bit of unexpected. And I, I think you're already anticipating your future need in that regard. So to the extent yes. we can stay on budget or include it in the budget process, the better. So yeah. then now would be the time that you would want to talk about those last two bullets if collectively you think using impact fees is, a, is the right way to go. Because otherwise you'll be out of budget cycle again the next time you have this conversation. Right. I'm going to eat my own words. Right. But in that case, <laughs> you, want, you want to know more before you think you need more information before you say yes. So that might be a a carvo where you say, all right, when we know more, come back to us and we'll have a conversation whether uh, it's needed and it's the right way to do it. And it's important to remember, too, that you're not going to issue bonds for a project that hasn't occurred yet. Right. Right. So right. even if we said in our budget proposal we anticipate bonding these items, once the, the project actually was either undertaken or changed or the scope was changed, we wouldn't bond the money just because we said it in the budget. We would bond it because we actually needed it. Right. I was thinking more if you were going to use impact fees. Mm -hmm. So the nuance there would be we wouldn't want to take it out of the CIP budget until we knew that we were going right. to have a right. funding source. So exactly. I think you'd still put it in the CIP budget. 
and then you would say your funding source yeah, could be impact fees yeah, yeah, or could be bonds. Because right. yeah. okay. in, in the budget, um, all projects are identified how they're funded. Um, there's an abbreviation code system that's used. Well, and I think the difference between between that you this is on your horizon <coughs> now. You know that there's the possibility that we might need to come to you and ask for the second set of classrooms at eight corners and whether we use impact fees or not. But like, I feel like this year when we did it, it was um, it was sudden. You know. Did I did I hear at a prior meeting that? According to state statute, we aren't charging as much as we could for impact fees. Did I not? Did I the statute doesn't that? tell you what the okay. fees are. The fees need to uh, bear a relationship to the need. Yeah. And in our case, uh, there was, and frankly, that's something we need to update because it references a uh, proposal from back in the early 2000s that so went that's, to the that's, that's what I state remember. funding. Yeah. Yeah. The updating of the charter. So perhaps. as you do your long range work and, and have better clarity on what your future needs are, we should, we'd be wise to reference that plan now. Actually, that's been on our agenda, too, all the impact fees. I don't think they've been updated. They get updated Well, but the I mean, fee. Never. The fee gets updated in. But okay. the conversation about uh, is, it, is it the right of part of the relationship? Is it the right amount? Yeah. yeah. Fully yeah. voted. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I think it's a part of the growth discussion that we need to have as a community. Yeah. Peter, if I can just, so um, I don't remember who brought it up. I, um, it might have been Hillary who talked about, let's say, this chart and the use of impact fees. So this is more of a plea to my co-counselors, and that is that you really, if you think about the core of the conversation, you're really getting into policy statements on how you want to manage money. And so, um, and the reason is that when you make those statements, then you can rely on those going forward in every year so that you're consistently applying it. So it becomes, this process should become easier. So what throws that into kind of havoc is when you make policies such as a capital budget pro uh, policy or a reserve policy or whatever other policies that we might have in the fiscal policy and then say we're going to now not plan for it and take it out of the budget. It really, um, you, you have to ask about the policy making process and the value of that because you don't want to have to, I mean I believe there's value to it as long as you stick to it and sometimes you have to swallow that pill because it's a little bit bigger this year than it was last year. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's a policy around the actual use of impact fees. There's the ordinance that prescribed the impact fees, um, but I don't think there's a policy around the use of the funds. So um, other than what's prescribed by statute and what was in the ordinance. So I just, you know, so how since, I, it, since yeah. I'm not here much longer, I just, you know, for everyone to consider what is the next policy and then whether or not there is a commitment to stick with the policy from a good management perspective because it impacts that ability impacts the overall credit rating because they look at the policies and then they compare it to your financial performance mm -hmm. when you get your credit rating and your bond rating so that you can then borrow at a better rate. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was that impactful. I'll take an applause. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so I think where we are. Would have killed him though. <laughs> So I think we are really the next step would be, as several have suggested, is where do we get to Wednesday night with our sort of deliberations and work? We'll better define where we are. I, I think, Bill, you're, you're suggesting you're optimistic that that will get us to a, a different place. Okay. So I think take a pause, see where we are Wednesday night, and then, and then figure out what that means for them. I, and I would suggest that even though I might not be in agreement, the very first request should be that we accept, based on what I'm hearing as a consensus, is to accept the two reports that were given to us tonight. It would be a very easy step and then move on to the next part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about if we want to make any adjustments. Additional the town after council, that. The town council so take side. these, because these yeah. were vetted before us, take these, yeah. and there appears to be a consensus, take these. <coughs> and. Uh, either approve or have a conversation and then, then take anything after that. Yep. Bill, are you able to share a little bit of your insight that leaves you feeling so optimistic? No, I think I'll wait till Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tune in on Wednesday. It's just a sharing audience. I'm equally interested to know. 
Tom, do you have any insight? <laughs> as, a, as a town council question, I had sent, because of finance, I had sent to Don, Tom, and Sean my questions. But would it be helpful for you guys to see those? Yes. For everybody? I would say share it. Sure. And so yeah. all of us, as we generate questions leading, well, it's soon, because it's Wednesday night. Everybody at the table. Everybody. Sh share them. Sean, you're saying share with everybody at the table? I say so. Yeah. Everybody? It's public record anyway, so why not? Yeah, just share. Do you guys have any questions for, for this us list? that yeah. we can answer or anything that you would like us to present or share with you in advance of Wednesday to make your decision-making process easier? I mean, if I'm hearing Sean right. This is a go. That's a go. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a going once, going twice thing, right? I mean, as far as well, well, on the school side. Mm -hmm. yeah. At least on the school side. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right, if you're adopting I'm not. Yeah. as I mean, written, there's nothing we're going to do. Don't right. be surprised I'm not voting in favor of it, but I'll <laughs> still accept the motion. Um, well, the only, the only... There's no surprises anymore. I know. <laughs> I mean, the only thought would be... So I, I think Sean's suggestion was we take these as the starting point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If we get to where Phil's predicting, sounds like we'll be good. If we don't get to where Phil's predicting and we're still, you know... 430 off what's our recommendation i think that's that's the only place that and i guess that's my question because here. so what i'm here is my my guess is this may perhaps there's things that are overestimated and underestimated and i feel like that's where bill's going with this um so if bill's magic doesn't get you to three percent right are or, we or, Closer. Right. So I guess my question is just because we might as well have this out right here. Is it going to be a finance committee that's not leaving the building until you guys are at 3% or like how is it going to get approached? Because because um, I think it's a little bit like I can respect Bill's because he, he might be, I understand what he's doing in the sense where maybe he doesn't have all, I, I don't know, I'm not going to speak for you. But I guess I'm curious as a counselor and, and watching it unfold on Wednesday, um, you know, I've heard Katie say, this number is close enough or thinking if it dips a little bit, I'm happy with it. You know, is that going to be the mindset of the finance committee on Wednesday or is the finance committee's objective is we're not leaving the room until we are at 3%. So I'm guess I'm asking this of those three, the finance committee. I think this from the school side of, before you, before anybody <laughs> answers that, if I could tack on one thing, I think on the school side, um, we would like to know whether or not we are going to be given a different appropriation. I mean, we want to know whether it's uh, the intent of the finance committee to split the difference with us 60-40, or 60, you know, whatever has been oh. said as precedent. I can only confirm my vote. Those ideas are already <laughs> in their head. I can only tell you what my opinion is, and I would not vote for that, for a different appropriation. But that's that's my personal. I mean, it, I, it's, I'm certainly not trying to put anyone on the spot, and I just feel like it's a right. component of the conversation that we should From have. a process standpoint, though, I think what I'm hearing you, you're asking is that if there was a change, that is where it would occur, and that's where it has always occurred. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Right? At the finance right. committee meeting. Right. Right. But given that not all of us would be present at the table and all present here, if there are plans to ask for a reduction in the school budget further, we'd like to have those conversations now. <laughs> And I guess that's where I was getting. Like, yeah. if, if there's, right. so really let's just lay that off right now. That. So you're asking us to solve for uh, a question that had, you know, we really haven't finished uh, asking all all the questions yet. Yep. So it's a I, little it's a little difficult. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if I'm hearing Councilor Caterina, Councilor Foley, Councilor Babine, and myself. We, we're good with what you've got done. Yeah, so that that discussion would not influence us. Uh, I mean, again, if, this finds, a, if, this finds, if there was some changes meeting, right? between this now is, and then that puts that a little lower, right. and you throw that out, I'm not, that's going to make me happy. Of course, that, and, and, that, and we are yeah, obviously we'll prepared, prepared to have right. it. Right. But I don't, I don't have a vote at the finance table. Yeah, so that's is, uh, like where this whole thing, and, and honestly, I think this is a great discussion because yeah. this has been where I have always gotten stuck and why it's like I don't have that say, you know, but I can, it can tell you where I'm at and, and if this were to come in front of, of the council, but I, I think 
again, we're in a much better place than we were, and anything between where we are today and and closer to that goal is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's also hard to have that answer because I specifically asked Don when he said, well, you know, there might be some room. I said, well, where on the school side is there room to remove? Right. And he couldn't answer. Then you got so. me in trouble by you know, giving you line item input. <laughs> you don't well, want that's, well, but that, but that, able I mean, to we're give asking you. for something that. You can give so. it. We just don't want to listen to you. Exactly. So. But even and on then, Wednesday, they can, all they can <laughs> say is, all right, we would like you to see you do a further cut of 25000 or 50000 or whatever. He yeah. can't and say. I, that's why I asked the question earlier about the number. So if there was a number, right? I mean, let's just pretend it was 150,000. It's just, you know, like obviously we're all looking at numbers. So, so oh, well, Katie must have been inferring that mm -hmm. potentially, but we can't. That's where this whole exactly. thing gets right. tricky. Right. Can, I, can, can I ask a couple of questions? Okay, so to maybe help out, for the, on the school side, is there nine or are there eight at eight ed tech positions right now? Nine. 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 nine so those are not going up, correct? Not going but, up. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, well, is it pot? Well, 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 sorry. We, still okay. have we, have, we have budgeted 15 plus okay. IP sessions. Okay. So there's so so it's not you're not you're unwilling to say that's a ceiling. You're feeling good. It's it, you're not you're it's not we're not at the point. Well, oh, maybe that will go down. I, I will literally point. give you this real life example. Yeah. The other day we had a finance committee meeting where Allison said her famous quote. Right. Literally one phone call away. Right. And before yeah. we even left the meeting, phone if you watch mm -hmm. as Alicia yeah. has, you'll hear yeah. me go <gasps> because yeah. literally we had a phone call as soon as Allison left that meeting that changed our numbers. Sure. And so yeah. I just I don't want to. I don't want to be quoted as saying right. something that you know we're not able to say. And I don't want you guys to. That's why I was trying to set the right expectation. Mm -hmm. yeah. The out of district tuition that was the surprise hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? That was relatively recent development. Mm -hmm. Is that only going in one direction, which is down, or could that go up as well, or is that something that you're feeling good about, or it could go in either direction? Either direction. Mm -hmm. Which is really the tricky part with nickel and diming the school budget is because it's, right. it is so volatile. And mm -hmm. that's not because we're trying to be mysterious or less than transparent. It just literally is that. Um, that's the reality of it. Uh, but one, one thing I would just bring attention to when you look at this uh, FY20 budget, if you're looking at the bottom line, the education net budget, we're talking about a $3 million increase from last year to this year for the whole entire school budget. And so... Again, I know we talk about percentages a lot, but if, like putting that kind of big picture and thinking about our enrollment demands mm -hmm. and our incoming um, specialized service demands. Yeah, I, I, I think we, we set a process. Uh, we said we we're going to follow through on it. I know this has been a great discussion, great progress. I feel very good about where we are and how we're trending. I think we've got a you know, full and fair discussion. Uh, it's been more like a town council meeting than a finance committee meeting, which that's not necessarily bad, but just a reminder. Uh, but I, I would feel most comfortable with following through on the, uh, on the process and you know, seeing where we are on Wednesday, and uh, especially given the fact that the deck's still pitching a little bit. So I, I just want to recommend actually uh, Tom kind of scribbled a note. I'd actually like to see the school's budget um, reduced by $2,046 because right now the actual increase is 6.66%. Uh, <laughs> so if you get at least I a different number in there, yeah. it would be a little less superstitious. Now I like it the way it is. Peter, I wanted to. So, so I think that. Um, uh, <laughs> Abel's question is actually a very or good increase. Or increase. Or increase. Or increase. Or increase. Or increase. <laughs> there you go again. Sorry. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's a, a, an important question. It's about the democratic process that we go through because that's what I think more people are actually disappointed about because of the roles and responsibilities that we have. And so trying to answer some of the questions in advance, because just as an example, by the way, Mrs. Sizemore is probably, as well as Kate and Ruth, um, have been here longer than I have. And having an amendment at the first reading is not unusual. It's happened in the sure. past. Having an amendment between the finance committee's recommendation and the actual second reading. Last year we had 500,000. Three years ago it was two million. Um, and, it come, and it literally we didn't know about it until the very second, until that second meeting. So that's, I mean, technically speaking, each counselor has that right to make that determination. It might be a citizen who got into someone's ear and. You know, it was the last one and said, you know, you need to go down or you need to go up or whatever it might be. 
So it's it's extremely difficult to commit. Um, so keep that kind of in mind, I guess. And I guess we're, you know, I guess we're, where I would be is, you know, we work through this tonight. We still have some, you know, I'm anxious to hear Bill and see and see what Bill's got. No, I got some things in mind. No um, So if, if your question was, at least from my perspective, could we commit right now that this is it? I'm a little uncomfortable with that until we have the conversation Wednesday night. But if our commitment could be by Wednesday night, then we can make some type of indication back on where we are. I mean, clearly, though, if, if you went around the table, you certainly hear where the majority of you is. Um, so I, I don't know how others feel. I, I Sean, whether it's OK to keep it open and, and Bill keep it open to Wednesday night. Um, if, if we find, if Bill's got the, the silver bullet that gets us closer, um, then I think we can then you know, kind of move forward. I, does, is that, well, you can't that, take a vote at a workshop. All you can get is a sense of where the temperature is, and I think you've gotten that sense. Yeah, no, we have, and I, and I think, I'm, I suspect most of you will be there Wednesday night. <laughs> so we'll have that conversation. We'll find out where we are. Does that work for all of you, or is yes. that a... We're supposed to, we just wanted to be sure that we weren't in a situation where, come Wednesday night, there were unanswered questions that... Uh, or questions that needed answers in order to make your decision on sort of appropriations. Um, it sounds like that's not the case. You guys have all the information you need, so we look forward to this thing. This, this thing is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, so I, I would just renew the request. It sounds like we've got a lot of work to do Wednesday night, so to the extent that you have questions that require some research on my part, please get them to me so we can have a productive, uh, focused discussion. The ones at four. I'm kidding. <laughs> An hour is better than being put on the spot. So uh, any time in advance is appreciated. So for the public, it's 530. 530. It says on Wednesday. Wednesday, May 8th at 530. Is that prior to a town council meeting? No. 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 That's so there's no that's, end in sight. That's the word. Oh, that's the word. Okay, so it likes the like to be a step in that after. What is that? What is the schedule from? So we will we'll make the recommendations. The finance committee will make the recommendation, but it will be talked about at the next town council meeting, right? Right. Yes. That recommendation will be put in writing, and it will be provided yeah. to the full council and to the public. And typically, as a courtesy, the first amendment uh, in second reading is to accept the finance committee's recommendations. But that happens on the, the that Wednesday town council meeting. The on the fifteenth. But if I can understand, sorry, I just wanted to recap because I think what you got. So after your second reading, our second reading is like the next, the next, next day. day. So I think what we're all trying to say is that if you have an answer for us on when, is that what you were saying? You'll have an answer in terms of what the school appropriation will be on Wednesday night. So we're not. Yes, like, uh, recommendation. Off, a recommend well, right. recommendation. 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 Yeah. And but, obviously but you heard, it's not. But you heard yes, where. Okay. Right. So perfect. I just but don't it, want to be up all night on Wednesday. No, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> don't, you're not going to sleep until the 16th. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, anybody? The second reading's on May 15th. Right. 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 So this no. Wednesday is the finance. Right. Well, I was saying, can, will we have more? Everybody okay? Anything else? Anybody? Mm -mm. I'll so, is there any public comment for anybody that would like to come up and have a conversation? John? No, we wouldn't have all that. Since you asked, uh, we've traded emails uh, with the council the past couple of days. And uh, you know, just looking over the past four years, uh, our spending and the ask of our taxpayers has lagged behind inflation, and inflation has been higher than I think what we anticipated, more than the three percent. So it's just something to keep in mind that uh, as you squeeze things today, that's going to come back in the future and typically require a reset. So balance what you do with the reality that's happening. Thank you. So with that motion to adjourn.
It's a workshop. It's a workshop. 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 workshop.